Hello everyone and welcome back to the breakdown today. I'm going to be teaching you guys how to start a Sky Factory 3 server. And this is going to show you everything you need to know to get your server up and running. But the thing is, it's going to be pretty resource intensive on your PC. Modded servers can take gigabytes. I would actually recommend at least 4 gigabytes for Sky Factory 3, just the server. And then another 4 to 6 gigabytes for the game itself. So you're looking at at least 12 gigabytes of RAM to run this. And because of that, it's pretty crazy. Even computers with 16 gigs sometimes can't keep up, especially if you have other stuff open in the background. I say that because the best way to be able to get a Sky Factory 3 server is to actually buy one from someone like AP. Apex Minecraft hosting. First link down below. Apex has been awesome enough to sponsor this video and you can get a Sky Factory 3 server over there for just $5 per month. It's super easy to set up. I'm actually setting one up on your screen right now. It is super easy, super simple, and overall just a great way to uh, get things up and running with a modded server without using your own computer's resources and costing you less than one meal out and about. So there you guys have it. If you want an awesome server, check out the breakdown.xyz slash apex modded. First link down below to get your server. Nevertheless, how do you set a server up on your own computer? Well, let's go ahead and jump on into it. The first thing we want to do is go to the second link down below and it will take you here. This is our Sky Factory 3 tutorial on our website, and this actually shows you how to download and install Sky Factory 3. I'm going to be doing it here, but once you're on this page, go ahead and click on the Download Twitch button. This is going to take us off to Feed the Beast, who's actually owned by Twitch. We then want to click on the Big Red Download Now button there, and in the bottom left, the Twitch app will download. You might need to keep this while if you do, it's 100% safe as long as it says Feed-The-Beast in the URL up there. Nevertheless, we can go ahead and minimize our browser, and right Right here it is on our desktop. If this isn't on your desktop, don't freak out about it. Just hit the uh, Windows button in the top left of my screen, in the bottom left of your screen, and it will open up your Start menu here. Then just type in Downloads exactly like that, and then click on your Downloads folder. Your Twitch app should be in here. Take it from here and drag it to your desktop just for ease of use. Once Twitch is on your desktop, just go ahead and double click on it. It will open up an installer that looks like this. You then want to go ahead and click on install. It'll go through, install, and open up the Twitch app. If it doesn't, there's a shortcut that it created over here on your desktop. You can open that shortcut. You then need to go ahead and log in with Twitch. Once you've logged in with your Twitch account here, you'll be able to uh, get things rocking and rolling. So let me log in real quick. Let me just verify my identity. Is that a tractor? I don't know if that's a tractor or not. Anyway, that's not in this tutorial. Let's go ahead and log into our Twitch account. And now I have to do two-factor authentication. Got, get one more second. If you don't have two-factor authentication set up, by the way, you need to do that. Keep your stuff safe. But nevertheless, no thanks. I'll do that later. Once you're logged in here, you want to find the Mods tab here. Now, Minecraft's already lit up for me. Yours will most likely also be lit up. But if it's not, go ahead and just click on Minecraft. And then it'll have you install it, right? There'll be a purple install button down at the bottom. Click on that install button and then you'll land on a page that looks like this. From here we want to go over to browse all mod packs and then we want to type in here in the search bar sky and then factory right so sky factory is all one word right there it is FDB presents sky factory 3 click on that and then click on the purple install button there while that's happening we need to go ahead and come back to this video and in the description we want to click the third link down below and it will take us off to this right here this is the sky factory 3 server files right these are all the server files that exist for sky factory 3 as you can see server pack plus one there that's what we want, right? So, how you get to this is click on the server pack plus one, click on that, and it will take you here where we can see that this is skyfactory 3 serverzip Click on the little gray download button there, and it will download in the bottom left. You shouldn't have to keep this file, but if you do, no worries. Now, I'm going to do that one more time. As you can see here, Sky Factory 3 is at the very top up here. We want to click on the plus one server pack. You see that? Click on that, and it will take you down to here where you can then make sure it says Sky Factory 3 server at the in it right there. See Sky Factory 3 server? Then click download, and you're good to go. It'll download in the bottom left. This is a huge file. So give me a second, and once it's downloaded, uh, we'll continue with the tutorial. The download just finished, and now we can minimize our browser. Again, it is on my desktop. Yours may be in your downloads folder. We accessed that already earlier. Once this is on your desktop, just right click on it. Go ahead and extract all. See that? Click extract all there and then just click extract. 
Now, if we look in the background here, Sky Factory has in, fin in fact finished installing. See that? So we can go ahead and click play on Sky Factory in the Twitch launcher. So then going to open up the Minecraft launcher here, and we can see it does say FDB Present Sky Factory 3. If it doesn't say that, you can click on the arrow here and make sure it is selected. Go ahead and click on Launch Options up here at the top. If you don't see that, you should have these three lines. Click on those three lines, and then click on Launch Options. Then click on your Sky Factory 3 profile here. And then you want to come down here to where it says XMX-3000, dash or XMX 3000, and we want to change that to XMX 6. Thousand, right? That's going to dedicate about five, five and a half gigabytes of RAM to this uh, instance of Minecraft, and Sky Factory needs it. So go ahead and click save there. Now we can click back over to the news tab, and at this point, you can run Sky Factory if you want. I'm not going to be doing that though, because I do not need to uh, to run this when I don't need to because of the lag that recording can cause. But we'll just minimize our Minecraft launcher for now. We can also go ahead and minimize the Twitch app. And then on our desktop, we should have this extracted file called FDB Presents Sky Factory 3. Go ahead and delete the zipped file. See that? Go ahead and delete that file that we downloaded. We can also delete the Twitch app file that we downloaded. And we should still have the shortcut on our desktop, which we do. Now let's go ahead and open up this FTB Presents Sky Factory 3 file here. And these are most of the normal server files that you're used to. The first thing we want to do is come down here to where it says settings. This should be a Windows batch file. You see that? It's just called settings. Right click on that and then go ahead and click edit and it will open up Notepad. Now, right down here is what we want to focus on. This is the RAM that our server is going to use. Out the gate here, I have 32 gigs of RAM, so I can go ahead and up this to 6 gigabytes without any problem. I would recommend upping it to at least 4 gigabytes, right? And then your minimum RAM, right? So for that, I would recommend doing 1 gigabyte, which is 1024, right? So I, that's what uh, settings I would recommend on the low end. On the high end, I would recommend 6 gigabytes. So let's go ahead and file save that now we can just launch our server using the server start file here so just go ahead and double click on that it's then going to go through and download and do a bunch of stuff and then it'll fail why will it fail because we need to agree to the eula so if we come up here to the eula we can right click on it and then click edit right and then it's going to open in notepad if yours doesn't open in notepad well then yeah i don't know why it wouldn't but it should just open in notepad and then when you're in here you want to go to this url make sure your server is not going to break that eula and if it's not you can change it from eula equals false to eula equals true t-r-u-e exactly like that then go ahead and click file save and now we can do double click on the server start bat right here it is again double click on that and this time it will run this is going to take a while. It's going to take a long while to get up and running. So uh, I'm just going to sit back, relax, let this open. And once it finally does, I will meet you guys and show you what to look for. So you'll know when yours is also done opening. Eventually, you'll just see this. Basically, creating new world data fill for world whatever. And it'll just go down and basically spam actually additions over and over again. And then eventually, when you see that, you can go ahead and stop your server. At this point, the server is actually set up, right? But we want to make sure our friends can join it. Because without that, why set up a server? Now, with that being said, you don't want to give this server out to anybody. You only want to give it out to your friends and family and people you trust. Because someone who gets this server can take your IP offline take your internet offline rather they can find out where you live they, they can do all sorts of stuff if you want to make a public server that you can give out to anybody and everybody again i would check out apex minecraft hosting that is the first link down below you can give that server out to anybody and everybody but this server you only want to give it to your friends and family so nevertheless if that's okay let's go ahead and get it to where your friends and family can join the server this is actually pretty easy all we want to do is go up to the top left for me bottom left for you click on that windows button there open up your start menu type in cmd exactly Exactly like this you should have command prompt go ahead and click on that and then command prompt type IP config IP C O N F I G then hit enter and it will open up this here we're gonna need our IPv4 address and our default gateway so first things first let's go ahead and find our server properties file you see this it's a server file it's a properties file over here under file type we want to go ahead right click on that and then we want to open with now you'll need to select notepad from this list I'm going to just double click on notepad again it will then open the server properties file here from this point what we want to do is find where it says server IP right here right next to this we want to put in 
0.123. Now, where did I get that number from? Well, I got that from IP config over here, and it is our IPv4 address. You want to put your IPv4 address right next to where it says server IP. Do not put mine because it will not work. Put your IPv4 address. It might be the same as mine, and that's okay, but do not put just this one because I put it. Put whatever yours is right here next to server IP. Then go ahead and click file, save, not save as, file, save will do. File, save, and then we can close out of this notepad file. After we've done that, we're gonna leave this open because we're going to need it later. We need to go ahead and open our browser. I'm gonna open up some resources and some tabs that'll help us out here. All right, so as you can see, we have a new tab here. In this new tab, we wanna go back to our CMD, find what our default gateway is, in my case, 192.168.1.1. It's very likely yours will also be that. And then you wanna type it up here into where you would type like uh, the breakdown.xyz, any website whatsoever, you wanna type your IP address or your default gateway rather. So 192. 2.168.1.1, right like that, hit enter, and it will open up a page that looks exactly the same or most likely completely different from what you're seeing on my screen. The only thing that should be the same is that there is a login box of some sort. Now, what do you put into this login box? Well, you need your router's username and password, and if you don't know that, we have an article for you. It is linked down below, and it is right here. This is our in-depth guide on how to find your router's password. It's helped nearly 35,000 people find their router's password, and it's just start with method one up here at the top and then work your way all the way down through method five to uh, get your router's password and username and then come back here and enter it in. Once you've done that, you can log into your router and it will look most likely completely different from what I have on the screen right now, right? This is a Linksys router. If you have a Linksys router, it'll look the same. But if you don't, no worries. Come over to this link in the description down below. And this is our in-depth guide to port forwarding. That's what we're going to be doing here. And if you watch this video at the top, it has all of the most popular router brands and how to port forward with them. So uh, go check that out if you want to uh, see how to do that. Otherwise, this is an in-depth guide and it walks you through through it step by step, but uh, you're going to be able to see it all in video right here. Once you've done that, let's go ahead and do it on this Linksys router. On Linksys, it's going to be in security. For you, it might be in advanced. It might be in advanced, advanced. It might be in admin advanced, but that's what you're looking for. And then once you're in here, you want to go ahead and find apps and gaming, or you want to find NAT gaming, or you just want to find port forwarding. You want to find port forwarding slash port triggering. It hides under many different names. For me, it's under apps and gaming, and then it is under single port forwarding. For you, it might just be port forwarding. You might not have the single port forwarding option at all. It might just be port forwarding. But eventually, you'll see something like this. It'll ask for a name or an ID. It'll ask for two different ports. It might be ex external, internal. It might be port one, port two. Whatever it is, doesn't matter. It'll ask you for a protocol of some sort, and it will ask you for an IP address. For the ID or the name, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to call this Minecraft. For the external port, I'm going to put 25565. You also need to put 25565 for anything in regards to port. You need to put 25565. Then for our internal port, guess what? It's asking for a port. So we're gonna put 25565 exactly like that. Then for the protocol, we need to do both or TCP slash UDP or UDP slash TCP. Whatever it says, you wanna make sure both protocols are selected. If you need to, just do it twice. One for TCP and then one for UDP. But we can select both and that's what we're gonna do. For our device IP, this is actually going to be our IPv4 address that we found over here. You see that? IPv4 address 192.168.1.123. That's what we're gonna enter here as well. From that point, now you just need to click save or apply or whatever it says on your router. Under device, by the way, it might just ask for like the device and then list out a bunch of stuff. Select your computer. Whatever computer you're setting up this support forward on, select that, then click save, and then I need to click apply as well, and then click OK. And now the hard part is done, guys. Your port has been forwarded. So at this point, we need to go ahead and close out of CMD. We won't need it again. Just remember your IPv4 address just in case. We're going to use it to test the server later. Go ahead and click on Start Server here. Then if you haven't all haven't like kept this open in the background, right? You want to open up your Twitch app. Load over to Mods here. Click on Minecraft, and then you should have Sky Factory 3 here. Click on Play. 
that will then open up the Minecraft launcher, which you may have to log into, by the way. If you do, it's the same stuff that you use to log into the normal Minecraft launcher. And then click on play down here, as long as FTB% Sky Factory 3 is selected. If it isn't, click on the little green arrow here, and then select FTB% Sky Factory 3, then click on play. It'll now go ahead and load up Sky Factory 3. First load always takes the longest, and the server over here is uh, loading up as well. I'll meet you guys when all of this is set up and running. The Minecraft launcher just closed, meaning everything is downloaded, and now it just needs to initialize everything when Forge and Minecraft opens. Luckily, we did dedicate more RAM to this, so that's not going to be an issue, but it is something that uh, you're going to need to know. It's going to take a long time for this to open up on its first run. Like, literally, if it takes you over an hour, don't freak out. It shouldn't take you that long the next time you open it. And there we go, Sky Factory has finally opened here. We can go ahead and just make this bigger really quick. And the music is very loud for me. I don't think you guys can hear it too much. You might have heard it there for a second, but Sky Factory's bigger. Let me turn off this music really quick here. Boom, music sounds, turn that down. There we go. Now, let's go ahead and test out our server. As you can see, we are seeing unloading dimension down there. That means we are ready to go. So let's just go ahead, click on multiplayer, and we're gonna test the server. So we're just gonna do direct connect to our IPv4 address, which is 192.168.1.123. Now only you can connect with this IP. So don't be giving this to your friends because they'll be like, I can't join off of it. Yeah, they can't. That's right, this is only for you. So go ahead and click join server, and we should see my name pop up over here on the left with the server file as soon as we log in. Wait for it, wait for it, it's doing all sorts of stuff. That always happens when someone first joins in. It's gonna happen actually most of the time when you join in. And by the way, if you get this, if you get the spinning circle of death, don't freak out, just be calm and let it load. And eventually, it will log into the game here. And as we can see, there's the classic rainbow. And if we look down, we are in fact on a sky block. Pretty cool stuff. But what if we want our friends to join in with us? Well, pretty simple. Just go ahead. We're going to disconnect here and your friends are going to join through the IP address that we find in a link in the description down below on this website. What's my IP.com. Now as you can see, there are black boxes over this whole entire part of the screen and over the first letters over here where it says your IP address is. That's because you don't want to give this out to everybody, right? I told you that earlier. It still holds true. You don't want to give this out to everybody, only to your friends and family and people you trust. You can actually see the information that somebody can get from getting your IP address. So yeah, yeah, be careful here guys, but nevertheless, let's go ahead and take the IP address here, copy it, open Minecraft back up, and then we just want to go ahead and direct connect. This time though, we're going to direct connect to the IP address we just found on whatsmyip.com. Here it is. Now, as you can see on my screen, you can only see the last three digits because I don't want to leak my public IP address to everybody. Then we can just go ahead and click join server right here. This is going to log us on into the server and I'll open up this over here for you so you can see in fact we are joining in and just like that we're in the server. That means your friends can join using your public IP address if you can as well. So yeah, awesome stuff. Here we are on the server. We can begin to, uh, to play Sky Factory and have some fun. But uh, you might have even seen there, there's a little bit of lag, and that's just how laggy these modded servers can make your game. If you do suffer with lag, if you are having some issues, I would recommend, again, an Apex server. Go to the breakdown.xyz slash Apex modded, first link down below, to get an awesome Apex Minecraft server running Sky Factory 3 for less than $5 per month. Also, guys, if you have any issues, if your friends can't join this server or something like that, then guess what? All you need to do is open up your firewall either on your PC or on your router. A lot of routers have firewalls and you need to allow port forwarding on them so make sure you go do that. Could also be an antivirus on your computer. So there you guys have it. That is this video. That is how you can start a Sky Factory 3 server. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome tutorials and content like this. And if you're just looking for an awesome 1.13.1 survival server, come check out play.breakdowncraft.com That is our server and all the information is in the description down below. But anyway guys, my name is Nick, this has been The Breakdown, and I'm out, guys. Peace.